Hey, how's it going? Jamie Fenn here, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to do this rotating world transition in DaVinci Resolve. If you guys like videos like this, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you get an update on whenever I upload a new video. Feel free to like the video and comment below and let me know what you think. All right, let's open up DaVinci Resolve and get the ball rolling. I have two clips in front of me. Both of them are shot at 4K resolution. They're both also color corrected to somewhat match each other. Next, you want to make sure that both of the clips are the same length. Drag one clip on top of the other, and then actually move that clip up. We're gonna copy and duplicate the clip underneath because we're gonna use that as our masking layer, and you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. Next, you want to highlight all three clips and click on New Fusion Clip. Put the playhead marker over this clip, go into Fusion. By default, these are connected incorrectly for this transition, so all you have to do is just double click on these lines and disconnect them. And just reconnect these bottom nodes like that. And make sure whatever masking node you have is up here on the top. In order to see what node that is, you can just drag it into the viewer window up here. And I'm going to rename it mask. I'm going to name this middle one mountains. And the bottom clip I'm going to rename to flip just because we're going to flip it. Also make sure this merge node is connected to this foreground on this merge node. All right, so I'm going to adjust my windows so I just see one window. So I'm going to click up here. The next thing you want to do is come to your first node here, which is my mountain node. And I'm going to hold down shift and press spacebar and type in transform. Then you want to adjust the size 2.5. Then you want to come up here to the center X and Y and drag the Y down and adjust the clip so it touches the bottom of the canvas that we're working on. Over here to our next clip, the flip clip, add a transform node as well and resize it to the same size, which will be 0.5. And you can either flip the clip here horizontally, or you can rotate the clip however you want, depending on whichever you know direction your clouds are moving. Maybe you want to match them up. But for this example, I'm just going to type in 180 and move up the clip until right about there. There is a gap here. It doesn't really matter, but you know, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to reorient everything at the end anyways. All right, so let's add the mask node. You can click right here and add a merge node, or you can hold down shift and press spacebar and type in merge. Either way works. Connect this merge node to the foreground on this merge node. Next, we want to add a mask to the masking node. So I'm gonna come over here and click on the ellipse tool, and I'm going to adjust it so it only masks out the top portion of this clip because I don't need an extra mountaintop randomly in our sky. And we're going to use this layer to cover up the seam here in between these two clips. So I'm going to adjust it a little bit more. And then I'm going to turn up the soft edge. Maybe bring in the border width a little bit. And then I'm going to click on the mask node and add another transform node in between that and its merged node. And I'm going to readjust it by dragging down the Y axis and covering up that seam there in the middle. Make sure you don't see the masking edge if you have one. Since I'm using the top of the clip as a mask, there's a little bit here. So if you need to just adjust the ellipse or the size or the soft edge, whatever you need to make sure you don't see that edge. So just double check that whenever you do this effect. Okay, so now we have our composite and now this is where the fun begins and we can start doing some fun keyframing. So the next thing you want to do is you want to come down to our bottom merge node and add a transform node between that and our media out. Shift, press spacebar, type in transform. And what we want to do is come to the very beginning of our clip and adjust the size to the point where the composition is covering the whole canvas. 
Also, we want to adjust the y-axis here under the transform and adjust it to the point where we don't see that checkerboard. The next thing you want to do is click on the keyframes for the center x and y, the size, and also the angle. I'm going to come in a few frames with the playhead, or just let it play by pushing spacebar. And I'm going to re-keyframe by clicking on these keyframes. Then you want to come to the middle of our clip, and you want to type in the angle 90 degrees, because that's where we want the clip to be halfway done with the effect. Also, we want to adjust the center y-axis and somewhat match up those circles. It doesn't really matter. Just kind of get them aligned, or you can, you can play with it, but I'm just going to keep them kind of matched up like that. Then we want to drag the playhead to almost the end and come over to our angle and type in 180. And then we can adjust the Y axis back up to the top until the bottom of the clip almost shows just about there or wherever you'd like. All right, so now we have our rotating composite, but as you can see, now we have the problem of the background showing as it rotates. So in order to fix that, you can come over here to our angle and click on these left and right arrows to toggle between the keyframes that we've made. And we're going to go to the middle keyframe. And then at the middle keyframe, just turn up the size. And I'm just selecting five for now. I did zoom in a little bit more for the intro video. But if you want to show both mountain tops, only go to five. That's fine. So now what you want to do is go to the last keyframe and select it by clicking on the arrow here next to the angle. And I'm going to adjust the size back down almost to the point where it's pretty much matched up, but I want to go a little further out. And then I'm going to go to the end of the clip and actually zoom it just a little bit out like that. That way it kind of fades at the end and kind of has a nice gradual zoom out at the end after the rotating part. The next thing you want to do is click on our spline window up here at the top. We can turn off the inspector and I'm going to adjust the spline window to be a little bit bigger so we can see what we're doing. And I'm going to click on the transform and that will select all the keyframes that we created throughout this whole clip. And if you actually press plus or minus on your keyboard, you can zoom in and out to see the, you know, the keyframing points a little bit better. In order to make this not look so robotic, you can adjust these keyframes a couple ways. I'm going to show you the way you can do it manually by just clicking on a keyframe point and then dragging the top of that you know, point that it creates for this green line and adjusting the curve how you like it. Or you can just click on a keyframe and push F and it will just kind of round out each point that you want to have rounded out. Really awesome and quick way to make these fade a little bit easier. And if you look over here on the left, we have three dots that are each different colors and they correlate with what each keyframe is here. So I just adjusted the size. So I actually want to turn that off and since these keyframes are kind of on top of each other, I'm just going to turn off the displacement and I'm going to round out these keyframes, the top and bottom. I'm actually going to get rid of the middle one. I don't really need it, but I just kind of used it for reference. And next you want to click on the displacement. You can delete the middle one if you'd like. It was there just for, you know, fine tuning adjustments. And I'm going to fade in the beginning keyframe by clicking on that first one, and I'm gonna fade the last keyframe for the displacement. So that rounds everything out and makes it look nice and smooth. The next thing I did is I added a adjustment layer. So if you come up to the effects library, click on effects and drag an adjustment clip on top, you can adjust the adjustment layer and add some black bars. You can do what I did in my most recent video is come over here to the cropping and I'm just going to do 140, 140. And if you want to know how to animate these in and out, check out this video linked above. I just put out a tutorial on how to do that, so feel free to check it out. And the next thing I did is I just added some color corrections. So I came over here to the color tab and I added one of my LUTs. 